All right, so I'm gonna show how to open up and disassemble this Acer Aspire E5-576 series, uh, model N16Q2, okay? So first what you wanna do is remove all the screws from the bottom. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, once you remove the 16 screws, um, if you wanted to just change the CD drive, you'd just remove this one. Um, and then after that, you can slide this out. So this is part of removing the bottom. All right. And then there's three more screws under here if you're going to remove the whole case. Um, but yeah, remove those three other screws. For all of these screws, you would use a PH1 or a J1 screwdriver. All right. Once you remove those, um, if you wanted to just do the hard drive and RAM, you actually only have to remove these three screws and then use your fingernail or pry tool to get underneath this corner here. And while you're lifting that up, go along the side. All right, and then just pull up the rest. Okay, just like this. All right, so there you go. That's how you would remove the cover. So to remove the hard drive, there's this plastic tab in the middle. So just grab that and then you can pull it back. Once you pull it back, it actually rotates up like this. So just pull it up at an angle. And then after you do that, you can take the hard drive out just like this. Okay, the hard drive is held in place with these four screws um, to hold this caddy on. Um, so if you wanted to replace this with a two and a half inch SATA SSD, or you wanna get another um, spinning drive, I don't recommend spinning drives anymore because um, SSDs are a lot cheaper or than they used to be. Um, and they're way faster and a lot more durable. So right now, the only point of getting a spinning drive is if you're trying to get a lot of storage. Um, yeah. All right. And then there's also the RAM here. So to remove the RAM, just like every other model, you just pull these two tabs to the side, the RAM will pop up. And then to put it back, same thing, put it at an angle like this and then just push it back down. But anyways, the type of RAM is PC3L. 12800S, so this is DDR3 memory. So if you look for um, PC3 12800S, you should be able to find this. All right. Oh, and then one other thing. So if you're gonna remove this panel, um, you want to remove this cable here. This holds the speakers and the speakers are actually mounted into this case. So to do that, just grab the two uh, wings. If you can't, um, you could also pull from the um, wire, but be careful not to pull too hard. You just wiggle it and keep pulling. Um, I'm, I don't want to pull on the wires because these wires are really thin. So what I'm going to do, um, if you can't reach it, you can try using like a screwdriver or something to get the other side here. And then you can use your fingernail on the other end and you can just wiggle it out just like this. All right. Or you can lift um, the cover off slightly and then you can do that. All right. So now we're going to put the stick of RAM back in. All right. So just... Put it at an angle like that um, since i took this cable out i have to be careful not to smash it on top so i'll use this and get it out of the way all right put the ram back in make sure you push it all the way in and then um, just push it down all right so to remove this cover what you want to do open the screen slightly oh it already actually popped out oh i forgot to mention um there's two more screws um to remove so you have to remove the two screws here under the cover as well so once you take the cover off you have to remove these two screws um, so to remove the cover remove all the screws that I mentioned and then the hard drive and this cable and then you can actually go ahead and remove the case so to remove the case I put the screen open slightly so that way I can have the thing sitting up like that and then I'll use my fingernails or pry tool and insert it between the bottom layer and the top and then just go around. Um, be careful with this side because this side has the um, VGA connector that protrudes out. So you actually have to do that side last. So go around from the front, then to the side that had the CD um, drive in it. All right. And then go around to the back. All right. Let's see here. Go to the back and then lift up these clips. Okay, just slide your fingernails or pry tool around and then you actually lift the cover off to the side this way so that way the um, VGA cable will be released okay or VGA connector will be released from here 
Okay, and that's how you remove the cover. The speakers are just held in place with these um, rubber washers, so if you need to take it out, you can easily take them out. I'm just gonna leave them in there. All right, all right. then here you can see the fan. Uh, I will have to clean this up later, it's a little dusty, but usually the fans I'll clean with a toothbrush like this. And then I have a thing that I just blow air into it to get the rest of the dust out. But anyways, once you get this open, just to be safe, you usually wanna remove the battery connector first. So just use your fingernails or pry tools, or you can even just grab the cable here because these wires are pretty thick, and then just wiggle it and it'll pop out like that. The whole battery will actually lift out just like this. Let's see here, it's hard to get a grip. So just lift the battery straight up. There's no like twisting or anything. You just pull it straight up, okay? Um, and if you need to replace the battery, here you go. The model is AS16B5J, okay? So that's the model of the battery. And make sure when you put it back that you have the wires going the same way. The two red ones will go to, to the left side. Well, depending which way you have the computer. But make sure it goes the same way. If you want, like, they mark it with a marker here so you know which side is up. Um, but make sure the replacement battery matches. The red go to this side. The black go to the side with the LCD connector. And yeah. Okay. So after disconnecting the battery, I always like to hold the power button to drain any power. Be careful because there's only one screw holding both sides now before the case was helping with two screws on each side of the hinges. So if you open and close this, you want to open it gently. Okay. And then hold the power button for about 15 seconds just to drain any additional power. That way if you disconnect the LCD connector or anything, you won't um, risk damaging the board. Okay, once you do that, since the screws are missing, I like to squeeze the hinges down with my uh, thumbs, all right, just like this, all right, and then here you can see there's the DC jack connector here, we got the wireless antennas here, so you got the white one at the top and the black connector down towards the screw. Um, to remove it, you just remove the screw, um, the wireless antennas, you go towards the tail, and you just pop it up at the tail, okay, just like that. Um, and then the wireless card, um, you just take out the one screw. All right. Use a lot of pressure because you don't want your screwdriver to slip and then damage the screw. The screw, um, it's actually, um, I believe, a PH0 or a J0 to get a better um, fit. So if you use the PH1 or J1, it's a little bit loose. Okay, but once you remove that screw, then the wireless card, you can lift up at an angle just like the RAM, and then you can wiggle it out. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it back in there. All right, and then we'll put this back. If you only have the PH1 or J1 screwdriver, just make sure you put a lot of downward pressure and you should be fine. All right. If your screwdriver skips though, like even once, don't continue. Um, try and get the right size screwdriver because you don't wanna strip out the top and then you won't be able to um, remove the screw or put it back. Okay, so to put the antenna back, you just line it up and then push it straight down and make sure you have it lined up properly. Don't just force it in or you can damage the either the connector or the, um, the wire. Okay, so to remove the LCD connector, if you need to do that, I just use the pull tab and then I use my fingernail or pry tool underneath the corner. So this side I can reach and then you just pop it up just like that. So the connector actually rests um, quite high off the board. So make sure when you're prying, you're not prying the this part of the connector. You wanna pry just this, this top piece, okay? So there, to put it back, you just line it back up, push it back down, there you go. Then you got the fan, it's held in place with these two screws. So if you want, you can remove that as well. All right, so we'll remove the two screws like that and then the fan connectors just like all the other ones with the wings you just grab it wiggle it and just keep wiggling don't use too much force and it'll come out okay then you can take the fan out so if you need the fan here's the fans model number actually they don't even okay dfs 561405fl0t i don't know if you'll be able to find the model of the fan with that or if you'd have to actually look up the laptop model number and then you can find the fan that way as well. Okay, so you can clean up the dust inside the fan. All right, and then we'll put this back in. 
All right, so we've got the fan. Um, all right, then you got the, towards the bottom here, you got the trackpad connector, I believe, and you got the keyboard connector. I'm not sure why there's another connector here because I don't see anything connected to it and there's no labels or anything. So let me see if there's, yeah, they don't label that. So I'm not sure what that's for. Um, I would assume it's for like a keyboard backlight uh, cable or something. But um, it doesn't have anything there. Sometimes it could be an SSD, or not an SSD, um, uh, what do you call fingerprint sensor as well. Um, and then you got the this connector here. There's an M.2 slot. I don't know if it supports a, um, a PCIe NVMe SS, M.2 SSDs. It doesn't say. Um, so that, if you're curious, you'll probably have to look that up. Um, I would assume so because it's kind of a relatively new model um, but yeah look it up before you order because sometimes these only support m.2 sata um, drives okay then you got this usb and audio jack that's replaceable just remove the one screw you can lift this out and then to remove the cable if you need to you can take it out from this end or i believe you can also take it out from yeah from this end as well so this side it looks like this side has a different connector so i'll take this out just to show you um, Let's see here. So take out the screw. All right, and then just lift it up. These little things kind of get stuck. Oh no, it's just a normal. Okay, it's the same flip tab and then you can pull the connector out. All right. All right, so it looks like that's pretty much all there is to this model. Um, oh, actually I need to show the screen. So let me show that as well since I'm eventually gonna have to change the screen on this model. Um, so since I'm changing the screen, it's always a good idea to disconnect the battery and hold the power button. Um, the other thing I'll show is the charge port here. So if you wanted to change the charge port, you'd have to take this one screw out as well um, from the hinges. All right, after you do that, you can lift this up and then you can take the charge port out. You just lift this up. Okay, so I'm not gonna take that out because I don't need to change that. Oh, I'm getting a call, but let me finish this video. Okay. So again, the DC jack, same thing. You just wiggle the connector, and as you can see, it comes out just like that. I'm not going to take it out because I don't need to change the DC jack. All right. So that's all there is on the inside here. Um, and then if you want to change the screen, what you do, again, be careful opening it because the screws are missing. Um, so this screen, uh, the frame is pretty easy to remove, just like a lot of the other ones. But basically, you get your fingernails underneath the inside part of the frame. And then while you do that, I like to get my fingernails um, in the top layer or just pull up. Once you can unclip it, it helps to slide your fingernails along the, uh, the outside and push it inwards. So while you're lifting up the, the middle, you push inwards um, to the center of the screen and that helps release the clips okay so just like this there you go all right just like that hopefully you can see all of this all right and if you're working on this be careful what surface you put the laptop down on because you don't want the motherboard to get shorted out on anything all right but anyways just continue going all the way around the laptop pulling the middle of the frame out and also pushing it towards the center. Okay, so just like this. All right, just like this. It helps to kind of like pull up on this um, while you're doing that since I can't push from the bottom. All right, so hopefully you can see. And then the other tricky part is these clips. So sometimes you can unclip those first um let's see so if not if they come out by themselves then you don't have to worry about it okay so these clips are coming out on their own so there you go so that's how you remove the frame and then the screen is held in place with four screws um i actually removed them already but uh basically remove the four screws from here 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 and here all right after you remove those four screws then you can flop the screen forward just like this all right, and then to remove the screen, what you want to do is just get underneath um, the adhesive plastic here, peel it up, and then once you peel that adhesive out, 
you can pull this connector back. All right, so that's how you remove that. And then basically same thing to put it back, just do everything in reverse. So that's all there is to this model. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe because that'll help me. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.